I first got the call, I think it was nearly sort of two and a half years ago from, from Johnston's of Elgin, asking if I'd be interested in working with them. I was aware of Johnston's, I knew about them, I love Scotland. All sorts of ideas came bouncing out of that. And the main result of that is that we would develop a collection of about 20 or so fabrics together, working with the Johnston's archive, and then with, with me bringing in my sense of sort of design and scale and color, kind of uh, working with their design studio to see what we could do together. The archive room at Johnston's in itself is kind of an amazing treat to visit. The archive room is, is lined not only with the most incredible kind of order books and documentation, but then it's also got a huge archive of fabrics and patterns, so every single pattern that they've effectively ever woven. So one of the things which was wonderful about sort of spending time in the archive, we discovered this amazing book, which was, I think, dating to the 1940s, and it's called The Standard Dye Shades. And it's got this absolute kind of rainbow shades of every color you could ever imagine. Really bold, vivid pinks and oranges, like bright acid greens and shocking turquoise and amazing colors. We stood and stared at this, and I was like, wow, this is where we need to sort of take things. I think it's true to say that there was a little bit of a kind of uh, drawn breath, if I could put it like that. They were quite surprised that I wanted to go quite that far. We'd established our palettes, which we were going to work with, and from there we spent loads of time with the design studio, kind of looking at all of the millions of combinations that we could come up with um, to see how we can um, make a new collection of tartans and stripes and um, hands tooths. We started developing the collection actually with the, with the idea of working with plaids and checks, so sort of basically what you and I would call tartan. This is not a traditional Scottish uh, palette, but these colours were all in the 1940s book. This is the sort of thing that I imagined uh, the Duke of Windsor might be walking around on a golf club in the 1930s uh, in a suit made of that. But, at the same time as you know, really wanting to kind of center the collection and ground the collection with some of these checks and plaids, if you made a whole collection out of tartans, you're sort of kind of not really uh, broadening it out enough. Basically, I've been obsessed for a long time with finding some wool stripes in really thick, bold stripes, such as I think these are completely sort of like eye popping. We then work through a whole collection. Now, strictly speaking, these aren't quite a hand's tooth. They're a false hand's tooth because they've got too many strands of fabric in each little block. But anyway, we're calling them a, a hand's tooth. And we've done those in loads and loads of different combinations. Here's one, which is sort of pink and olive color. This is what happens when it's green and white. These are much more sort of, you know, much more general use, incredibly kind of useful, versatile fabrics. They'll work on almost anything. When we were playing around um, with the set designs, we made curtains out of the tartan fabrics, which looked extraordinary. They also work really wonderfully as bedspreads and headboards, so there's just so many different ways that they can all combine together. So we've actually created a huge, versatile, hopefully, kind of arrangement, lots and lots of different choices for people to play around with and have fun. What's it all about? For me, the collection is really the opportunity to bring together a wonderful and historic kind of Scottish uh, fabric brand with incredible history and then to hopefully combine it with my eye and what I've been able to bring um, to the design process in a way that is very innovative and feels very fresh and contemporary and um, ready for today.